In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. There's a leadership group called the Pastoral Care Team, comprised of lay people. Maybe you are sitting with a person or two from the Pastoral Care Committee in your pew. And we meet in person once a month, and we do other work during the month. Pastoral care means the spiritual, physical, and emotional care of people who are experiencing a change. Now that change could be a happy, hopeful change, like welcoming a baby into their home. It could be a hard change, like saying goodbye to a loved one. And so the pastoral care team gathers to pray for people, those who are on our list, whether we know them or not, whether we know what's going on with them or not. We pray. Maybe we have prayed for you, or you have put someone you love on that prayer list before. As we gather and pray and listen, we determine what needs there are for our parish, what meals have been sent, what meals need to be sent, what cards have been sent, what cards need to be sent, what artwork might adorn the face of some cards, what prayer shawls and prayer beads have been delivered to a hospital or a home or mailed to someone. Maybe phone calls or check-ins could be helpful. We figure out in that room prayerfully what next steps can be taken. And recently this group had an idea. I cannot take credit for this idea because I was not there when it came up. I simply get to extol the virtues of these lovely, loving people. They said, let's put our prayers into action. Over and above the cards and phone calls and meals and other support that we already extend to people. So gathering decorative materials from a nearby craft store, a room of our dedicated lay people adorned lovely wooden crosses that were also donated to the church. And then in a time of 70 minutes, we decorated and divvied up those crosses and with a few days, those reminders of God's redeeming love and the compassion of St. Stephen's were delivered to more than 20 parishioners, some of whom we don't get to see in the nave on a normal Sunday because of mobility concerns or other limitations that are happening right now. One participant related to me that it was the most meaningful pastoral care meeting she had ever attended. Prayer moved into action, brought new life into the pastoral care team. And I, I'll say it was a balm that we have needed because of the hurt and the sadness of these last few months. Putting prayer into action helped us too and touched the lives of those we love. And so as we offer those prayers that are turned into action, we're giving our words, our attention, our hands, our space. We're giving all of that to God. And so prayer is a form of gift. We hear in that first reading today from a book we don't read very often, Sirach, uh, we hear that first line, give to the Most High as he has given to you and as generously as you can afford. This scripture is from the wisdom of Jesus, son of Sirach. It's nestled in the Apocrypha, some Jewish scripture that was part of the Christian tradition for 1,500 years prior to Reformation. It was then cut out um, and then has been picked up more recently. And so we hear this scripture, give to the most high as he has given you and as generously as you can afford. 
I'm going to name that we are gathering in this time of, of gratitude in our stewardship season where we reflect on how we will commit a portion of our income to the budget of the church in the coming year. So this scripture is timely in that regard. Um, I'll, I'll say that first fruits giving to the church in my own life is, is important in what I do and how I live as a child of God because God has given so generously to me. God has given generously to me through the gift of life, through the gift of love, through the gift of worship and ministry here in this place and in the larger church. And so I write a check to the church each month. I still write checks. You don't have to write checks. You can have it automatically deducted, but I love the physical writing of that check because I am participating fully in saying, I am giving this gift to the glory of God. And a friend gave a tip to me. She said when she writes her check to the church, she writes on the foreline, thank you. It's a reminder of the deep gratitude I feel because I can give fully. It's a commitment that I make in gratitude. It's one that we can all make in gratitude. I believe this scripture from the Apocrypha calls to us in different ways, not just for stewardship, not just about giving our tithe to the temple, but also to give God ourselves through prayer. In this gospel, according to Luke, we meet Jesus as he's telling a parable. It's of note that he's telling this parable to people who probably really need to hear it because they're acting a bit on the self-righteous side. He's telling this story about people who are going to the temple to pray. You see, the Pharisee comes to the temple and he prays somewhat self-righteously, God, I thank you that I am not like the other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this guy next to me who works for the Roman establishment collecting taxes that we don't want to pay. And so the Pharisee continues that he fasts twice a week and he gives 10% of his income to the temple. He does good stuff. He's following the rules of faithful living as a Jew. So good on him. And as Jesus is like often to do, he brings a contrasting character into this story, the tax collector standing in the back because by his occupation, he is not welcome in the thick of the crowd. You see, he's an extortioner for hire. He works for the empire. And yet he draws near to pray. He knows he is not worthy. He prays, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Both men come to this place for reconciliation and repentance. Jesus says that the tax collector departs more justified or understood in a different context. Maybe he, he leaves in right relationship with God, for he shows deep humility. The way we pray reveals our relationship with God. The Pharisee was telling God all that he had done and all that he was doing, all the things, checking the boxes. And he was honest. The tax collector was full of regret and asking for redemption and forgiveness. It's often that I find myself saying, oh, that bad Pharisee. I mean, really, I need to be, you know, more humble and, and open and, and, you know, repentant of, of all the things because sometimes I am like the Pharisee and comparing myself to other people. I don't, maybe you don't, but maybe like I see someone else's hair and think, gosh, her hair looks so good. Mine just looks messy. Or, wow, I have 
maybe it's the, the less, you know, loving thing. Like, um, my shoes are really nice. I just, those boots are so muddy. Ooh, I'm glad I don't have those gross shoes on. Like, the, I sometimes compare myself to other people. Confession. Um, and so we listen sometimes for who we are in this story. And each of these characters have something to lend to each other and to us. Each has something to teach. The teacher is teaching through these teachers. There's something to be said for right living, for our choices in life can be those prayers and action, how we're choosing to live in community and what we are doing. Those can be prayers embodied because that's what faithfulness is, relationship with God through thoughts, words, and deeds. God also calls us to be humble and open as the tax collector. In doing so, we stay open to love one another and to be repentant. For Jesus is the reconciler and the healer. That's why we need Jesus. We hear a shift in that New Testament reading, that second letter to Timothy. Paul says, you know, that, that I'm getting, get, I'll get that crown of righteousness. And then not only to me, but, all, but to all who have longed for his appearing. So it's not only for his own building up, but to help others. See, he's getting the idea. It's a community that God is calling us to live into. Because Jesus, the reconciler and healer, did not die for one person. His death put away all death, and his resurrection from the dead presented all of us a gift so that we may, with that tax collector, lift our eyes to heaven and say, thank you, God, for the gift of your son. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.